Dr. Timothy Leary yesterday on this show described himself as being 20 years ahead of his time. His involvement with the mind-expanding drug LSD has resulted in his being praised by a faithful minority and damned by an irate majority. He was our guest yesterday, as I said, but due to time, we were unable to explore the issue as much as we had hoped. We asked Dr. Leary if he would come back today. Once again, here's Dr. Timothy Leary. Mr. Young, Mr. Lee, Ms. Morrow, Mr. Treacher. Let's see. Hello. Hello, oh, I should give you my hand, too. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a doctor. Yes. <laughs> He's ready for the operation. I'm actually just trying to keep cool. Yes, it's in warm. all this excitement. Yes. It, uh, not a medical doctor. Yeah, uh, he looks like with white. Psychologist. Psychologist. A psychologist. Which does not, doctor, require uh, medical school, a formal medical training. I was trained as a clinical psychologist and practiced as a psychotherapist for many years and did research for many years in uh, the treatment of the mentally ill right. before I got involved in the psychedelic drugs. As we left yesterday, we were talking about, I had asked you a question, whether you felt that LSD should be supervised by a doctor, the taking of it, and you answered me with no, you didn't think it was necessary. Am I, or am I incorrect? Uh, that's right. I don't think that uh, the psychedelic drugs are drugs at all in the sense they don't cure any physical illness. Uh, they're not drugs like heroin. They're not drugs even like alcohol. Uh, they're instruments which uh, expand consciousness. They speed up the mind. And as I said last uh, yesterday, and I've said many times, uh, in the future we're going to be using chemicals uh, to uh, open up and uh, make more effective our brains because the structure of the brain is chemical. Uh, chemicals are the keys which open up and speed up uh, and but, expand the mind. But as you say, that is in the future. I mean, today, tomorrow, should LSD be taken without proper supervision? Do you know that much about the potency of the drug? And I had asked you, let me extend the question, I had asked you if, for example, you'd heard about some of the bad cases, the oh, boy... Oh, I, I, I hear about them all the time. Uh, the, uh, the dangers of LSD are tremendously exaggerated. Uh, the press uh, and uh, some uh, politicians uh, grab any one case of an LSD uh, panic and they make a big issue of it. Do you this know little of girl, any cases? This little girl, for example, the five-year-old girl who took the sugar cube. Well, actually, she was released in two or three days. She's back at home. Uh, there was no... Uh, the damage that was done to that little girl was the fear and the panic uh, of the adults around her because... Uh, there's no uh, physical after effect from LSD. We read that people taking wrong doses have had their brains turned to vegetables. <laughs> well, you know of no case. Uh, the brain uh, cannot turn to a vegetable. Uh, there's no evidence that psychedelic drugs uh, affect the physiology of the brain. As a matter of fact, they act very quickly. After a few seconds, uh, they're metabolized from the brain. The effect is on the consciousness. It doesn't affect your body. So there's no physical effect from LSD. Could you drive a car under the influence of LSD? Uh, well, um, it would be like driving a car if you had a series of lenses on your eyes that could go from the electron microscope to a uh, spectacles. If you uh, had the electron microscope on, you'd see all sorts of energy around you, but you wouldn't be able to see the curb. If you know how to use LSD, you can bring the focus in so that your eyes are much sharper and clearer. We had a baseball game once in Zihuatanejo, Mexico, where I had a training course for 40 Harvard graduate students and young professors. And the last day of the um, um, training course, um, we were going to have a baseball game with a local professional team from Acapulco. Now, the rumor got out that we were the Harvard baseball team, which we weren't. And the villagers came from miles around in trucks and buses and was advertised. There were several thousand people on this uh, Mexican uh, baseball field. And there were men in sombreros gambling on the game. And it turned out, you know, that none of our men really had ever played much baseball at all. But the night before uh, this final day, uh, everyone there had had an LSD session. And they were still under the influence of LSD. Not, they weren't completely into it, but they were still uh, uh, high. And I thought, this is really going to be a scandal. Uh, uh, will be disgrace uh, to Harvard and the United States and to the uh, great baseball um, uh, sport. But as it turned out, uh, our players played well over their heads because the ball would be thrown at a batter. 
Well, he'd watched that ball coming, you see, and space and time had slowed up. Well, as the ball took 10 minutes to float from the pitcher's hand, he could count the seams. Uh, he remembered every baseball play he'd ever made in his life. He speculated on the history and philosophy of sports back to the Olympics <laughs> games. Uh, he considered the competitive nature of human relations. And then very slowly, after about four or five minutes, uh, the ball would be right there standing, and he would go crack. And uh, the problem was about the ninth inning, uh, we were ahead nine to seven, and I had to pull uh, half of my team and put in uh, youngsters uh, who were with our families that hadn't taken LSD so that we could gracefully lose the game in the ninth inning to uh, <laughs> save both Harvard's reputation and our international relations with Mexico. The answer to your question is... I forget LSD the question now. Yeah. <laughs> the the, the question had to do with can you drive ah. a car. I'm trying to say that ah. uh, physical coordination, uh, if you know how to use LSD, it's an instrument like a microscope. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily drive a car. If you were, had a microscope here, you'd want to look at a snowflake or you'd want to look at a, a, a cell uh, because uh, that's what the microscope is about. But you can, if you know how to use LSD, uh, focus it in on whatever you're doing. Why then, doctor, have you called for a one-year moratorium on the use of LSD if you believe in it so strongly? Well, uh, we're in a period now of tremendous social crisis. This happened when, uh, they, uh, when Pasteur said to doctors, you better wash your hands. Well, the whole medical profession was upset. Who's this crackpot telling us we should wash our hands? Or when uh, those fellows looked through the telescopes and said, you know, uh, the world isn't flat, it's round. Uh, tremendous anxiety developed in these philosophers and the religious people. I mean, you just can't shake up uh, man's uh, expectations with a new idea. Now, we're today in the middle of a very dramatic evolution in man's notions about himself. It's going to take one generation. In 15 years, we're going to be using these drugs like LSD and many more powerful drugs. In the meantime, there's this tremendous anxiety. Everyone is uncertain what's going to happen, particularly there's a struggle between the generations. Uh, the older people think that the kids are going out and uh, so they're taking heroin or so doing something terrible. Uh, the youngsters who are taking LSD today are not doing it for kicks, as uh, we, we discussed uh, yesterday. Most of these youngsters are doing it because uh, they want to expand their mind. They're curious. They want to learn more. They want to use these new instruments. So that for the next few years, there's going to be a lot of social tension. And I'm urging the young people uh, who have used LSD or marijuana to take this time for the next year not to uh, stir the boat, but to try to explain to uh, your parents and try to explain to your teachers uh, why you w want to use these mind-opening drugs. And, uh, shouldn't we wait, learn, though, um, instead of explaining to your family, shouldn't we wait for some official Absolutely. Word? We're very concerned about that. There's one thing I'd like to say to the audience. Uh, have no illusions about this. No government foundation is ever going to solve your psychological problems. No government foundation or the medical profession or the psychiatric research is not going to solve your spiritual problems. This is something that each man has got to do for himself. And we can't wait around until some blue ribbon commission, whether it's in Moscow or Peiping or Washington, yes, doctor, but without the supervision, is going to tell us that we can or cannot uh, expand our consciousness. But without proper supervision, someone knowledgeable enough to advise you if LSD is used in, for example, a psychiatric session, oh. you just can't go be, be taking LSD and expect to solve your own problems, can you? Yes, you can. It's a matter of, it's like learning to use the microscope. LSD is no shortcut. It's not a shortcut to God. It's not a shortcut to psychoanalysis. As a matter of fact, it's the toughest and it's the longest discipline of all because you're dealing with more energies. So that what's needed is training. We need more manuals. We need more people who have had experience with it. Uh, uh, in a sense, LSD is like the airplane was 70 years ago. And there were crackpots like me 70 years ago who were going around saying, do you know that in 30, 40, 50 years we're going to be flying around the world in a few hours? Oh, yes, but doctor, this, you're talking about the brain, not, uh, not an airplane. Yeah. Well, what's your point? Well, I should think it would be, uh, that's a strange parallel for authorizing the use of LSD. This is something no, my, physical my point, that you're doing to yourself. Uh, my point is that it's going to take one generation to train people how to use this new form of energy. It's going to take one generation to develop centers where people can take LSD. In the meantime, just as with the airplane, 
uh, some adventurous people went out in a cow pasture and with baling wire and canvas they started experimenting and that's what's happened with LSD it's happened with every form of energy that's come along the telescope uh, the uh, politicians uh, three or four hundred years ago didn't want people with telescopes they let's wait till we have a commission to let us know what this is all about you've taken you, you, it how many times you cannot stop a new form of energy by passing laws against it you've got to use wisdom and training and knowledge but you just can't wait until uh, Big Brother in Washington uh, tells us we can do this. How many times have you taken? I've taken LSD 311 times. You're married, you have children. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wait a minute now. Are, are those teenage children? Uh, yes, I have two teenage children. Have they taken LSD? Yes, my teenage children have taken LSD several times. We'll be back further and, and talk some more right after this. <laughs> David, let me impose upon you, if I may. You, uh, I'm sure, have some questions you'd like to ask Dr. Leary. <laughs> well, I don't know about questions. Uh, Tim has been a guest uh, of mine several times, and I have an absolute dichotomy about him. As a man, I like him. As an intelligence, I respect him. But I think his advocacy of this permissiveness with this drug, total freedom with this new and potentially fascinating and dangerous drug, is arrogant and irresponsible and vastly dangerous. I'm, I'm always worried when I have the crowd with me, Tim. I must be wrong. But I do want to tell you that you are, you are not a doctor. You're, by your own statement, a clinical psychologist. You have a PhD in psychology. Many doctors of great reputation Dr. Luria and the head of our drug administration and many others all over the country have admitted at one and the same time that the drug has fascinating possibilities. In Canada, they showed a positive cure of alcoholism under carefully supervised use of LSD drugs. Incurable alcoholics were cured, but they were superintended by doctors. And in Boston, they had habitual criminals and they gave them LSD over a period of time. Yes, and the I, rate, I, did, I did that. I know you yes, were involved. I did that and the rate of recidivism uh, dropped to almost nothing mm -hmm. among these criminals. But those were carefully superintended scientific experiments. It is a drug whose dangers and possibilities we are only beginning to sense. And I think it would be wrong, criminal, irresponsible for people, young, middle-aged, anything, to, to have access to this drug to be encouraged to use it, to take flights into fantasy, where you can beat a Mexican baseball team with some Harvard professors. Uh, I, I want you to know that I agree with you in one sense. It is equally irresponsible on the other end of the spectrum for state legislatures to ban experimentation of the drug, to finding out what this drug can be and what it can cure in human uh, uh, aberration. But for you to go about the country preaching total freedom, live, now, wait a minute, expand David. I, your I mind. I did not preach total freedom. You see, uh, I'm always being accused of telling people to take LSD. And I said to this audience, and I've said in every lecture and in every speech I've ever given, that LSD is the most complicated discipline of all. If you can't handle your little chess game of New York City and your job and so forth, don't get involved with, with the psychedelic drugs, which infinitely complicate and open up and give you new perspectives. Well, who can handle uh, it's the going little to take, chess game of uh, New York City? I often, I, tell, I often tell people, uh, particularly college students, if it takes four years after your degree to get a PhD, and if it takes eight years to get your uh, MD, if you want to get your LSD, count on 30 years, because you're dealing with the most complicated instrument that God has ever created, much more complicated than a computer. That's your 13 billion cell nervous system. Now, as I look around this country, and as I look around the world, I think I'm in an insane asylum. I'm not at all unhappy with the way things are going. I think that the thing about living in the insane asylum of modern society is like a fish in water. The fish doesn't realize he's in water. He thinks that this is normality. Well, the way we're living today in these cities of ours uh, just doesn't make sense to my nervous system and to, the, uh, to my cells as I am. Uh, ah, yes, but you, but you contribute. You, now here, you let me say one more thing. Here, we, here miasma, we have a new, Because we, you don't ask people with your drug and your experimental flight you don't ask them to participate in the world. 
solve the population explosion, the specter of nuclear of annihilation, I I, race of relations. I do. You say uh, go away somewhere. No, did I say see that? the seams uh, on David, a baseball. I didn't say. See a greener I, green. I didn't but you say said that. it to me I, many I times. I did say that your mind and conscience can be opened up. It's but a retreat, then, not an application It's absolutely of the not mind. a retreat. Not taking LSD is a retreat because most people who don't take LSD are afraid to confront the real realities. It takes courage to take LSD. And people it takes under work LSD are unable to confront reality. They do. It's, that, see, you don't know what you're talking about. You've never taken LSD? <laughs> Jim, I have it. For six years, I've been in the situation of uh, looking through this microscope. Once a week, I take LSD, and I come back, and people like David, who's a one well-meaning gentleman, can sit here and tell me things about LSD that he has never uh, had any contact with. Dr. Luria, who's the head of the local medical society and is making speeches on television about LSD, he's never taken LSD, he's never seen anyone who's taken LSD, and I have to debate with him. Uh, I mean, it's, it happened uh, with Galileo. You know, all these fellows say, you can't say the world is round. And I say to uh, you people, look through the mic. If you don't want to take LSD, fine. But if you want to uh, sit in front of a television camera and tell millions of people about LSD, David, now, Tim, you should I have take it. Taken it you but should I've take been it. with someone, people that took it, because Gentlemen. I was uh, researching it. Time. They broke into cold sweats. They cried. They shivered like a baby. They were back in the womb, you know? Time. I have to call time. Because I must announce that we have been requested to have a man, a qualified medical doctor, to come on and give his argument uh, against the use of LSD. And that will be tomorrow. I'm not sure who will be, but a qualified man. But thank you, Dr. Leary. Nice having you on the show. Thank you, David Suskind. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you, Mr. Young.